<clears throat> Good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. It's 2.39 two, uh, a.m. I'm on my way to the gym. I've been saying that for a couple years now. I'm proud to say that I have been regimented and routined enough that I've said that same thing pulled out of this driveway. Um, my daughter is four and I've been having these conversations around that time, four years. And it reminds me, I don't have to think about waking up in the morning. I don't have to think about turning on this camera, doing these videos. Some of the things that at first may have been an option, may have been, do I want to do it? May have been, remember to do it. Anything practiced long enough becomes a routine. And I have to be reminded. I think we. I think it's good that we all have reminders. I think that's why accountability is so important. Is because accountability just simply. It's not like somebody's coming over to your house. They're gonna break your arm and they're gonna say, "Hey, you must do this. You need to do this." Accountability is simply saying, "Do you remember what you said you wanted to do?" And for is, I know my faith is strong. I know my faith is very strong. But sometimes when a problem arises, I'll take the I'll take the mentality or the road that okay. God has provided me answers before. Like these divine thoughts just come into my head and they are like the one. They are the right thought. And they create a resolution to whatever the problem is. So I'll just say, well, you know, something's come up. I'll just, I'll just wait. Right? And I, I know that patience gets me what I need. You know, one of my mentors told me a long, long time ago, I don't make a decision shorter than 24 to 48 hours and never until I've consulted two or other two or three other people who I know have the answer to this problem whether it be a doctor a lawyer a physician and then I'll make my decision so I said well I'll just I'll wait meditate on it lock the situation into my mind and then let the formula start working and it works but I have to be reminded because I don't do it as as routinely as I as I should I have to be reminded God wants you to have a conversation with him God wants you to have a talk with him and the last time I did it was uh I do it for business transactions. I do it, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that nobody in my family is sick or injured, um, you know, um, clinically. In other ways, you know, you know, family is what it is. But I prayed for a house that I really wanted to get for a client. And, uh... I, I normally don't do that either. But this one was different. I needed to get this. And I had been messaging this agent, trying to get the agent's attention, telling them where the deal, you know, because it's in a tough market right now. There's five, six, seven offers coming in on every property. I said, we're the right deal. You need to go with us. Got my lender on the phone, had everybody calling. I, I had it popping. I was like, we're going to get this. And um, a day later, I still hadn't got my response back. And I, I, something said, go look and see what the status of the property 
Texas and it said pending and they didn't take our offer. So I, I messaged the realtor and I said, hey, I noticed that you already took an offer. It looks like the property went pending. Congratulations. Um, how much different from their offer was ours? And I said, well, everything was similar except a contingency, you know, something that we couldn't match. We couldn't possibly match. We weren't going to match. It just wasn't going to happen. And uh, I said, okay. I said, well, congratulations. I said, I'm going to keep my eye on this property because we really want it. And uh, I'd like to know, do you have any backup offers? And if not, we want to be in a backup position to the offer you have right now. Bro said, no, we don't have any backup offers, nothing in, nothing. Not even an hour later. True story. Just happened. That deal fell through. The buyer canceled the contract. Is your buyer still interested in the property? People, <laughs> you know, you simply just got to trust. We live so far and deep in fear that we can't even see straight and when we live like that long enough it's like talk to God we automatically assume he can't answer fast enough to fix the problem he answered it in less than an hour less than an hour I was back on the phone got a call hey our deal fell through your clients still want the property let's go And then the deal just got better and better and better. But even I, just like working out and my sleep regimen and my wake up regimen and my showers and my push ups and my eating habits done for a while they just become second nature it's not it's not most people is like well you still gotta think about it it's like no it's very simple just do it and one thing accountability and one thing that we always need reminders of until we start doing it naturally so I always wondered why my grandmother was so calm so cool how she just died so peacefully and it's funny, I was just looking at her death certificate, a, a box that I keep stuff in. It looked like it was broke. Um, so I grabbed it down. I didn't even know that's where her death certificate was at. And uh, I always wondered how she died so gracefully, so youthful, youthful, 80 plus years old, youthful. That's the best way I can describe it. And it was because she spent 80% of her life just trusting God and not worrying about the outcome. That's what you have to do and take it to him in prayer.